Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Right here we have the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, which as you can see has a really slim and really premium looking design. So in this video, we're gonna dive into this laptop and talk about the physical aspects of it, what's different about it, the internal components, and we'll also get into a webcam, microphone, video, speaker test uh, to really figure out how good this laptop actually is. Now, with that being said, guys, there's actually two different models. There's a 15 inch model, and then this is the 13 and a half inch model. And there's a couple different colors, and the colors all look really nice with an aluminum body. This one is the ice blue, which as you can see in most lighting, looks more silver, doesn't really look that blue, but I guess in the studio lighting, you can kind of see it looks a little bit blue there. I guess ice is really not that blue anyway, so it makes sense. But you can see on the top, we have a really nice clean aesthetic. So not only is it a thin laptop, but you have a nice flat aluminum body on the top. So just a really flat piece of aluminum. And then on the bottom, very similar, just a flat piece of aluminum. We don't have a fan down here. We don't have a speaker down here. So it's kind of nice. I'm not worried about it really getting anything in there. I'm not worried about breaking the bottom. Uh, just a nice clean aesthetic. Now, the fan is actually backed by the hinge, as you can see right there, which personally, I mean, I've seen a lot of different orientations for where fans go on a laptop, but I think the back tends to be my favorite one. When it's on my lap, just blowing out in front of me just makes the most sense. Uh, so it's not like blowing on me or out of the side or something like that. I think that that's a good style right there. Now, of course, that does limit how far the hinge can go back, but we'll talk about that in a second. Looking at the right side, we'll see we have just a little slot there. And at first glance, you might think that's an SD card slot. Unfortunately, it is not an SD card slot. This doesn't have an SD card slot anywhere on here. Instead, that is actually the charging port. So Microsoft has their little proprietary charging cable and it's just a really slim profile. It magnetically snaps on there. So really easy to put in place. And like I said, it has a low profile. So when you're working, it really doesn't stick out much and it's not going to be like, it's easy to take out, put on pretty convenient. But I mean, considering the size of this laptop, I would probably rather have just another USB type C port there and I'd be fine charging by USB C. But regardless, that's what Microsoft chose to do. And, and so that's what we have over there. On the left side, we have just three ports. We have a USB type A, which I'm glad they still have that. We have USB type C and this actually, you can charge through this as well. Um, and then we have a headphone jack. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will be using that USB type C port for a dongle. So you can have HDMI or micro SD or an SD card or a lot of other things that you might wanna have because I mean, it's pretty typical. A 13 inch laptop usually doesn't have a lot of ports. So that's just what it is. You're gonna have to kind of get used to that if you want the 13 inch model. And so looking at the rest of this laptop, if we open it up, I mean, the first thing you might notice is that it looks a little bit larger than a lot of 13 inch laptops. And that's because in a lot, in, in a way it kind of is. So even though it's a 13 inch screen, the aspect ratio is slightly different than a lot of other ones. So for example, the Dell XPS 13 is I, I believe 16 by nine. So it's a little bit wider and a lot of laptops are wider like that. This one is actually three by two. So it's going to be a lot taller than a lot of other laptops out there, giving you more of a square shape as, as opposed to a long rectangle. And because you're measuring the diagonal for 13 and a half inches, this technically has more screen real estate. Personally, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, it gives you a little bit more working space while still keeping the laptop uh, very compact, very travel friendly. Uh, and I think it's a really nicely sized laptop. Now I'll get more into what the screen is all about in a second, but I wanna talk a little bit more about the aesthetic here. We do have a bezel around there. So typically, I mean, a lot of laptops don't have ultra thin bezels yet. They're not anywhere near where phones are or tablets are. But I mean, it's thin enough that it's not going to be a massive eyesore. I mean, it's probably, I mean, I hope in a couple of years that laptops have really thin bezels and this might look antiquated, but for now, it looks pretty standard. Now on the bottom, right below the keyboard and all around the touchpad and everything, you'll see that it has kind of an interesting texture, interesting aesthetic there, where it almost feels like if you made velvet out of rubber, uh, that's that's pretty much what it feels like. I think it's kind of nice. Uh, so if it's like really cold out, these this will not be cold. So it's nice in the winter. Now I'll get a little bit more into the keyboard in a second, but you'll see on the laptop on the screen, uh, we actually have on the top a couple sensors. So we have our microphones, uh, we have our camera, and of course we have our face ID. So it is using uh, infrared, you open it up, blink some little red lights, read some face ID. 
And that's the only biometrics you have. This one does not have a fingerprint sensor, which I don't think is really a problem. Face ID is so fast and you already have that bezel anyway. So the only catch though, is that this webcam is only 720p. Now we'll get into a test in a second, but 720p in a laptop made in 2021 feels a little bit low to me. I feel like you should at least have 1080p. I know a lot of people are on Zoom calls all the time and different types of like Teams and, and Skype and whatever else you're using. Having a high resolution camera, I think would be a good benefit. It can't be that hard to add that onto an expensive laptop like this. So I'm not really sure why they chose to do that. Now you'll also notice that this laptop doesn't have any visible speakers. So they're kind of hidden along the top and, and underneath the keyboard. So we'll actually get into a test to see how well that performs in a second. Okay, so next let's take a closer look at the keyboard. Obviously a very important aspect of any productive laptop. And the first thing I wanna point out is that this does have backlighting on the keys. It actually has three levels of backlighting. So one, two, three, and off. So maybe that's four levels, however you look at that. And the keys themselves are made of plastic. I found that they don't have a ton of travel, but that makes them pretty quiet and pretty subtle, which, I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag on this one. Some people really like the subtle, uh, low travel, low profile keys, because they can type really fast. Other people prefer the more mechanical keys and would like something larger, more metal, maybe similar to uh, like the HP Spectre, for example. Honestly, I'm a little bit used to the more mechanical keys, but I'm, I could get used to this one very quickly. And I feel like I would have no problem typing fast. With that being said, uh, it does have a little bit of a slightly lower quality feel when they're all plastic keys. And there's a little bit of flex in the middle of the keyboard, especially if you're a harder typer, you might notice that. But I mean, ultimately, I feel like the keyboard I could definitely get used to and I don't have any major complaints about this. The trackpad similarly is made of plastic and it feels like a relatively premium plastic with some pretty tight tolerances. But of course, it is still a plastic trackpad. Now something to note physically with this laptop is the hinge on here. I think Microsoft did a really good job balancing this. So first of all, if you open it, there's really no hinge wobble. It stays very steady anywhere you want it to. And second of all, when it's closed, you can very easily just open it with one finger and it doesn't lift up the other side of the laptop. I think they did a great job balancing it. Perfect stiffness, perfect feel on there. And it gives you a really nice premium experience pretty similar to what we're seeing with a lot of the MacBooks. Okay, so next let's talk a little bit more about the display. Like I said, this is a 13 and a half inch three by two display. So it's gonna give you approximately the size of a piece of paper. So it's 8.8 .8 inches by 12.2 inches. And that gives you 2256 by 1504 pixels. So it's a little bit more than 1080p, but a little bit less than 4K. I found that the resolution on here is pretty good. Ultimately, the screen uh, looks really good, vibrant colors, very bright, very clean. And I mean, I like the display. It's also a touch screen, of course, even though it doesn't fold all the way back. So you can see that that's about as far as it goes right there. It is a 10 point multi-touch screen. So it's nice for poking on the screen or whatever you want. and Similarly, this does accept the Windows Surface Pen, but with that being said, I don't really know why I would be using the, the pen if it doesn't fold back all the way. And of course you can't fold back any farther than this as I mentioned before, because we do have that little fan right on the bottom and you don't want it blowing onto the screen of course. So I think that's a little bit of a drawback of having the fan back there. I find that this bends back far enough for most situations, but every now and then I would like to bend it back just a little bit farther. Something else to note about the display is while it does get really dim and really bright, if you're outside, it's definitely prone to a lot of glare. So something to be aware of if you're gonna plan on working outside a lot, but that's pretty much everything I wanna talk about with the display and the keyboard and pretty much everything physically. So let's actually now get into a test of the speakers as well as the webcam and the microphone. All right guys, so this is the webcam and the onboard microphones. If I was in a video call, it would probably look and sound something like this. Of course, I am in my studio right now, so there's no echo and it's really the best lighting that this thing is ever really gonna get. So you guys can leave a comment. It's limited to 720p, but do you think this is acceptable for a video call or would you like to see something better? So let's get into a quick speaker test. This is maximum volume, by the way. So honestly, good clean audio, pretty good volume, especially considering this is such a small laptop and you see no speakers on there. Also a surprising delivery of bass. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the internals of this laptop. Of course, there's a lot of different variations you can get. You can get AMD or Intel. The most typical configuration you'll see at Best Buy is the Intel i5 with eight gigs of RAM, which I think is a little bit underpowered for my purposes with editing videos and stuff. 
So I drove like 50 miles to buy the i7, which is the 11th gen Intel i7 processor, and this has 16 gigs of RAM. Now, according to Microsoft's website, they also configure this up to 32 gigs of RAM, um, but I don't believe it goes any higher than that, and finding that in a store, I think is gonna be almost impossible. Now, with that being said, they promise 17 hours of battery life with the Intel i7 on this laptop. Of course, it depends on what you're doing, but they promise 19 hours on the AMD, so a subtle difference there, if you're looking for battery life, the AMD might be a better choice for you. And I mean, ultimately, when I'm doing basically everything I'm doing, editing videos, browsing the web, I find that 17 hours is a reasonably accurate estimate. It's really hard to say exactly how long I use it because I don't always use it for 17 hours straight. And of course I do all kinds of different stuff on here. Editing a video versus browsing the web have very different demands on your battery. But I mean, the battery life ultimately, I think did a pretty good job here. All right guys, editor Mike here. I was trying to edit this video on this laptop just to really test it out and, and put it through its paces with Premiere Pro and Premiere crashed. And now we're looking at, it looks like it's running on low memory is what it's a little error message said. And things are just really frozen. I can't close windows. I'm going to have to reboot this, but it's definitely disappointing to see a brand new laptop run into issues like this. Now getting some pros and cons with this laptop, starting off with the pros, I think they did a great job with the aesthetic. I, I really like how slim this laptop is, I like the feel of it, and I think they did a great job with the hinge as well. A really nice, smooth, well-balanced hinge to really give you that premium feel, uh, and you just know it's, it's a well-built laptop. Similarly, the screen, I really like how they have the aspect ratio of three to two. I think it gives you a lot more working space that makes it more bearable to use a small 13-inch laptop. And so I don't feel really like I'm using a 13 inch laptop because it has that big aspect ratio. It also has the really nice keyboard backing, that little soft touch kind of rubbery feel. I think it's interesting over time. I, I hope it doesn't wear down too much, but I mean, it's kind of a cool thing right there. Now getting into some drawbacks, there's a couple that I had in mind. The first one is that it's a 720p webcam. I just really wish we'd push that forward, make it 1080, but I mean, regardless, it's 720 for some reason. The second one is a subtle one, and that's anytime I glance at the keyboard, I think the caps lock is on because the little circle that is translucent is actually pretty white, and it looks very similar when it's on or when it's off. Another one is that you don't have a lot of ports on here. Obviously three on the left side is, is great to have, but I wish we had at least one more USB type C port on here. So I don't always need a dongle for anything I ever use, but I mean, again, it is what it is. But ultimately guys, this laptop is, is pretty simple. I really like how it's built. It looks nice, it feels nice, and it's just gonna be kind of a no frills laptop. There's other laptops for the price if you're looking for more features. Maybe you want a touch bar on the top, maybe you want an S Pen, you wanna wirelessly charge your phone on the trackpad. There's other laptops that do all of that. But I think a lot of people interested in the Surface laptop won't really care a lot about those extra features and they're really looking for something maybe for work, maybe for personal, but you want something that just works, it works well, it's easy to travel with, and it's a slim, sleek, fast laptop. And I think that's exactly what this one is. So ultimately, I'm a fan of the Surface Laptop 4. Uh, you guys can leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this laptop, if it's something that you will be buying or not, and if there's anything you liked or didn't like about it. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I will be reviewing a couple more laptops just like this one coming up, so definitely subscribe so you don't miss those. I'm Michael Bryan, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.